According to different reports, the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate Certification is the one that is desired by most who are looking to become AWS Certified. As a result, it's of no surprise that this certification has been revised and updated and the new exam will be available to take from the 23rd of March 2020. This new certification is labelled as version SAAC02, replacing the existing version of SAAC01, which will retire on the 22nd of March 2020. However, those of you who have already passed your certification under SAAC01, you will still be certified as an AWS Solutions Architect Associate until your expiry date defined on your certificate. I took this certification during its beta period back in November to help me understand the difference between the two versions. And since having passed this new certification, I have been busy creating an entirely new learning path here at Cloud Academy for this updated exam. Now, in addition to our existing content that we already have, a lot of new content has been created specifically for this certification, some of which covers the following. How to use bucket properties and management features to maintain data in S3. Decoupled and event-driven architectures. Managing AWS organizations service control policies, SCPs. Elastic IP addresses. Elastic network interfaces. EC2 enhanced networking with the Elastic Network Adapter, VPC endpoints, the AWS Global Accelerator, the DynamoDB Accelerator, cost optimization for AWS storage services, high availability with DynamoDB and Aurora databases, AWS Cognito, optimize and spend with reserved instances and saving plans, and multi-tiered architectures. Now looking at the certification itself, it's split across four different domains. These being design resilient architectures, design high performing architectures, design secure applications and architectures, and design cost optimized architectures. In this first domain, design resilient architectures, you'll be assessed on your knowledge of how to design a multi-tier architecture and ensure such solutions are highly available and fault tolerant. In addition to this, you must show an understanding of the benefits of decoupled and event driven architectures. Storage also plays an important part in this domain and you are required to demonstrate your awareness of resilient storage capabilities in your architecture. With this in mind, you'll be introduced to the AWS Global Infrastructure, providing you with a foundation of how the underlying architecture is pieced together on a global scale. We shall discuss how to implement a multi-tier architecture within a VPC using multiple subnets and networking components, amongst other features and services. You will also be introduced to Amazon Route 53 and Amazon CloudFront, and also some common disaster recovery and business continuity strategies. You will learn the differences between decoupled and event-driven architectures and some of the services that allow you to implement such solutions, such as the Amazon Simple Notification Service, the Amazon Simple Queue Service, Amazon Kinesis, and AWS Lambda. From a storage perspective, you will gain a deeper understanding of storage services and how they can be used to help maintain your data from a resiliency point of view, including Amazon S3, AWS Storage Gateway, and Amazon EFS, to name but a few. Looking at domain two, you must understand how to design high performance architectures across the compute, storage, networking, and database categories. The key areas of focus here is to ensure that you know which services to use and configure to implement elastic and scalable solutions for compute workloads. So we will cover the configuration of auto scaling and application and network load balancers, in addition to services such as Amazon EC2, Amazon Elastic Container Service, and AWS Elastic Beanstalk. Again, you'll be assessed on your AWS storage service knowledge, but this time from a high performance and scalable side of things. We'll look deeper at Amazon EFS and its configuration, plus an insight into additional features within Amazon S3. From a network standpoint, you need to be able to demonstrate you have a good knowledge of how to architect infrastructure that can support your workload effectively. So I'll focus on many of the VPC networking components that can help you to do this. From the fundamentals of the VPC itself, including subnets, elastic network interfaces, and the elastic network adapter, to security controls and considerations, including network access control lists, security groups, NAT gateways, and bastion hosts, plus connectivity options such as VPC endpoints, virtual private networks, direct connect, transit gateway, and the AWS Global Accelerator. The final component on domain two will test your awareness and knowledge of database performance and what you can implement to help you manage workloads across your databases. 
We introduce you to many of the different database services to give you a foundation knowledge of the different services available before honing in on some of the performance options available, including high availability with Amazon RDS using multi-AZ features, in addition to high availability options across Amazon DynamoDB and Amazon Aurora. You'll also be introduced to the Amazon DynamoDB Accelerator, known as DAX, to boost your database performance tenfold using cached clusters. Domain 3 for me personally is probably the most interesting content, but that's because I love the security aspect of AWS. You'll be assessed on three main points across this domain. You'll need to know how to design secure access to AWS and its resources within it. You will have to understand how to design secure application tiers and finally be able to recommend and select the most appropriate security services and features to protect your data. We have content to help you understand all of these areas and elements and one of the main services that you'll need to know and be familiar with is AWS Identity and Access Management known as IAM. So we cover this in some detail which also covers federated access. You'll also be introduced to Amazon Cognito as well as AWS organizations, in particular the service control policies that this service offers. From an application security standpoint, we focus on the AWS Web Application Firewall with an introduction to Firewall Manager and Shield. Login is also a crucial element of application security and so you'll learn how to enable login and use it to your advantage from a security standpoint. You will understand how services such as AWS Config and AWS CloudTrail can also be used to help you audit, monitor and evaluate your infrastructure for security issues and incidents to help you resolve threats quicker and more effectively. From a data security perspective, you will learn how to protect your data using the AWS Key Management Service, known as KMS, to encrypt your data across multiple services, in addition to learning how to manage and configure multiple encryption mechanisms used by Amazon S3. The final domain of the certification looks at cost optimization across your architecture. So it's important to understand the different costing metrics to different services and how you can optimize their configurations. Here we spend time looking at the different costs associated with AWS storage services to ensure you understand the full spectrum of price points associated with these, such as service class or tiers, using specific management elements of a service, for example, provision throughput in EFS or S3 replication time control, using different types of requests, data retrieval and data transfer, replication and more. You'll be introduced to compute savings plans and reserved instances and how these can be optimized to save you money across your EC2 fleets. And finally, a review of some of the cost optimization features and best practices when designing a cost optimized network architecture. So all of this content and more is being prepared for our new learning path which will be available on the 23rd of March. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me with the details on screen, or alternatively, please contact support at cloudacademy.com. So good luck, keep studying, and let me know how you find the new exam. I'd love to hear about your result.